today we shall be discussing pneumatic p controllers you know what are p controllers proportional controllers the output of the controller is directly proportional to the error so this is realized using pneumatic system and the biggest advantage of pneumatic system is that it has no electrical component therefore there is absolutely no scope of any electrical spark and that is one reason that we may go in for pneumatic controllers in all those risk prone area where you may have some volatile material where you may have some steel filings and all that which can produce short circuit uh, and we may go in for pneumatic controllers simply because uh, we are continuing with the controllers and uh, we want to replace it in due course of time but right now we don't have budget so we continue using the same old pneumatic controllers as they were used when the analog and the digital controllers were not actually being there so if it's working and it's uh, doing its job then there is no need of unnecessarily disturbing these controllers once they fail if at all then they can be replaced by the electronic ones the digital ones as such so the heart of any pneumatic controller in this case the p controller as you can see is nozzle flapper unit so once again as you see this is this this thing is called flapper this is pivoted over here and this is a flapper it flapper means it can move either in this direction or in this direction depending upon which of the torque is more and uh, the torque will be determined by what is the force acting here 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 and so on and so forth this force multiplied by distance distance can be x2 distance can be x1 and uh, the entire torque which is produced is uh, by the spring and uh, we will be taking into account this also just understand that uh, this is a bellow and this bellow has area a1 and for the sake of convenience we take this also of the same area a1 and this is uh, another feedback bellow which may be having a different area a2 as shown in the figure over here uh, these two bellows are connected in opposition to each other so whatsoever is the net torque is uh, whatsoever is the force acting by p in and whatsoever is the force acting by psp the two have to be subtracted to know the net torque uh, this net force force will be basically this pressure into area is force and force multiplied by this distance x1 that will be the torque so uh, if this p in the pressure the input the pressure signal is always taken from 3 to 15 psi as we have been telling you again and again this psi is pound per square inch and some people add g to it uh, not out of respect but because it's a gauge pressure that's why it's psi g that's what we go in for here it's going to move the flapper either towards my right or towards the left as you see over here depending upon which torque is predominant and accordingly the gap this is this is a flapper and this is the nozzle the gap between the nozzle and the flapper is going to either decrease or increase depending upon the motion of this flapper so this flapper will move either away from the nozzle or towards the nozzle depending upon what is the net net torque this this spring as you can see is pulling this spring is pulling the uh, flapper on on the direction shown over here in this direction and what you can see over here that this pull of the spring is going to produce a certain amount of equivalent torque and that can be adjusted with the screw over here it's a manual screw which can be set it's actually the output when there is no error so this is once it is set it remains uh, constant throughout this becomes the bias or the traditional p not as we call it in most of the equations so uh, the idea is that you understand the entire uh, uh, philosophy or funda of the nozzle flapper unit which is that this this nozzle is leaking all the time this it's you know exerting some and uh, some um, air is flowing from here and as the gap increases for example the gap increases it means that the flapper is moving away from the nozzle so what happens in that case the leak will increase the flow rate will increase and the flow rate increases then in that case what is going to happen the pressure over here 
is going to drop because this is a restriction and more flow rate means more pressure drop so this pressure is going to drop and this nozzle moving away means this pressure is going to drop conversely this nozzle this nozzle uh, the flapper and the nozzle the flapper is moving towards the nozzle the gap is decreasing so in that case when the gap decreases then this leak over here the flow rate of uh, air from here it decreases and so there is a lesser drop lesser drop means pressure over here is going to increase so this is one thing which is going to affect the output this is the basic principle of uh, any nozzle flapper unit which is being used in pneumatic controller and therefore it is also being used in the pneumatic proportional controller as you are seeing right now on the slide now interestingly what is happening is that this output whatsoever is the p output that goes to a feedback below the feedback bellows are connected over here and we have taken that this feedback bellows are having area a2 and this is going to push this flapper away from the nozzle and this is going to exert force this force will be equal to p out multiplied by a2 and this force multiplied by x2 this is going to be this is going to be the uh, torque it's going to be the torque in anti clockwise direction it's going to make the flapper move away from the nozzle and it's going to move away from the nozzle it means that this output is going to what will happen if this flow over here increases then the pressure drop the pressure drop is going to increase and this p out is going to decrease itself so you know this is self balancing kind of thing self balancing in the sense that there's, there's going to be a stage when uh, this is going to it will go on increasing and increasing and it's going to push away and away and away and then ultimately the flow rate increases and because of that this p out it decreases and so this also decreases so this flapper is going to come so it's going to find its uh, equilibrium point where where this torque exerted by this feedback bellow it's equal to the torque exerted by rest of the four elements so which are these four elements you already know that pn into a1 into x1 is one element and psp into a1 into x1 is another element element in the sense that it's exerting torque in the clockwise direction this is exerting clock in the anti clockwise direction and all, all, all the net torque will be uh, this pin minus pisp we will discover we will discover all these mathematical equations in due course of time but right now i think it's very important that you understand the basic concept and the philosophy of nozzle flapper unit one by one and we come to what ultimately is going to be that this is the input this is the set point the difference between the input and the set point is what we call it as error so that error is producing one torque and the output is producing another torque and this uh, spring is also producing a fixed torque that is giving the fixed output p naught depending upon the setting of this uh, screw and the nut over here which can be manually adjusted it's giving a pull in this direction as we have seen and uh, this is what the exact configuration of a pneumatic proportional controller is but is it proportional it is really proportional to the error or not that is what we are going to see how this thing is derived mathematically one by one in another two three minutes uh, not changing the slide so that because we have to always refer to the same diagram that's why i try to fit in all the mathematical equations into one single slide so that you can have a quick look without uh, going forward or backwards along the slide so this is the concept of a pneumatic p controller let us see how this it comes out to be equal to p controller whether it really is equal to proportional to the error or not so going by the notation once again as you see uh, let me uh, confirm once again that p naught is the output pressure which we set uh, when there is no error and this can be increased or decreased you can turn this uh, uh, in a manner that you can pull it on this side so that's going to decrease the gap decrease the gap means decrease the flow rate and hence increase p naught so if you want to have greater p 
P naught. So you can keep on pulling the spring in this direction. You will have more and more P naught. You fix it. You lock it uh, over here once for all, uh, depending upon whatsoever was the steady state of the uh, output, uh, pneumatic output. Now, uh, this P in is the input pressure. This is the measure end, or you can see the measured value or the feedback. And A1, as you can see, is the input for both uh, the input bellows as well as for the uh, set point bellows. Uh, needless to say, the set point pressure at PSP, as shown over here, is given to the opposing bellow over here. And this X1 is the distance for the uh, this is level arm for input. And, and it's not only for the input, but it's also for the set point as such so as such this is x1 you can see p out is the output pressure which ultimately is going to be the output of the nozzle flapper unit and a2 is the feedback bellow uh, this is the feedback bellow and a2 is the area of the feedback bellow effective area and the if the torque is calculated by multiplying by a distance x2 uh, and and this distance can be made adjustable one of the two x1 or x2 it can be made adjustable normally we take uh, x2 is taken as adjustable we can move this x2 up and down uh, through a mechanical arrangement in such a manner that uh, this x2 is variable now uh, coming to the equations as we see one by one which are uh, going to be very very simple uh, as such provided you understand uh, the meaning of torque if the direction of the torque and so on and so forth what do we see we have the first torque which is taking place over here you have p out minus p naught so this p out is going to push this flapper in this direction so that it will be moving it in the anti-clockwise direction that is moving towards left that is moving away from the nozzle over here and this p naught multiplied by a2 multiplied by x2 this P0 multiplied by A2 and X2, this is the effective torque and this P0 is the effective pressure to bring about the uh, same amount of uh, torque but in the opposite direction. So depending upon P0, depending upon the position of the screw, uh, this P0 can be increased or decreased but it's in the opposite direction. So that's why this P0 is here with the minus sign. Yes, P0 is here with the minus sign. So this is the effective torque which is going to make this flapper move away from the nozzle that is in the anti-clockwise direction. So what is happening in clockwise direction? This is ha happening, happening in anti-clockwise direction. So what is happening in the clockwise direction is just that you have the difference of P in and PSP. So P in is moving in this direction and PSP is moving in this direction. I'm just supposing for the time being that P in is more than PSP. That is the error. So P in minus PSP is the error. This is producing some uh, uh, torque in the clockwise direction making this nozzle move in this direction thereby decreasing the area uh, decreasing the gap between between the flapper and the nozzle of course it's multiplied by a1 so pressure into area becomes force force into uh, distance from the pivot it becomes the torque and you can see that this torque is in the opposite direction as compared to this torque as will be seen right now that this torque as you can see is in the clockwise direction whereas this is in the anti-clockwise direction so uh, both these torques are acting in the opposite directions thereby uh, making this flapper move away or towards the nozzle depending upon the direction of the torque that is taking place and that is acting upon this flapper now we have to simply uh, rearrange these terms in a manner that what you get is this P out after rearrangement, it comes out to be uh, this something, this A1 is constant and A2 is constant. I said that normally you can take X2 as variable because I want to make this term variable because this is something uh, which is going to determine the gain. Why? Because you see this whole thing is very equivalent to, if you remember, output of the controller is equal to error multiplied by gain error multiplied by gain plus p naught p naught is the pressure at the uh, time when there was uh, no error at all so this represents this represents gain we used to represent gain by kp 
uh, if you remember in normal terminology you can call it gp also but normally it's called kp so depending upon uh, whatsoever uh, is the terminology you're using and you want to change the gain you want to increase the gain you want to decrease the gain you can manipulate either x1 or x2 depending upon the structure of your mechanical your pneumatic controller the mechanical links of the pneumatic controller so this is very important this x1 upon x2 and a1 upon a2 this term as such is what we call it as kp and uh, depending upon the value of k x2 you can have a variable gain and this is quite uh, clear now that p out is equal to kp into pin minus psp plus p naught that is the output of the controller is proportional to the error plus the nominal output which was there at the time when there was no error so uh, this is this this is a gain which is variable and this is what it makes the entire uh, pneumatic controller a proportional controller this is a proportional controller this is what we have seen it's a p controller a simple p controller and whatsoever are the properties of a simple p controller that it cannot remove the offset that uh, it increases the sp speed of the response and so on and so forth so all those things uh, which we had studied in so far i'm not going to repeat but this is how pneumatic p controllers are realized that is you want to have a proportional controller making use of a nozzle and flapper you don't want any op amp you don't want any electricity you don't want any uh, uh, risk of uh, sparking taking place or you don't want to spend money and whatsoever is already there available in the pneumatic controllers you want to continue with that so this is what i had uh, encountered way back in 1988 uh, when I went in for my first job and uh, I was exposed to these pneumatic controllers over there they look like a simple piece of box and in between they had uh, as I had shown in my previous uh, sessions in the video sessions nozzle and flappers I could not get any head or tail of uh, what is happening so all they used to do was that okay, the bellows getting punctured you replace it or uh, and it, the orifice is getting blocked so with the help of an orifice cleaning wire they used to clean it and they used to make some adjustments and I was just looking uh, like a little child uh, what is happening but now uh, as you go through uh, the same experience if at all you come across any pneumatic controller uh, you know it's been ages uh, 1988 and, and this year you have uh, you, you actually will find that all these things very interesting as such because you know the fundamentals of pneumatic proportional controller as such uh, they form they form a good rugged kind of uh, uh, controller we don't need any electricity there's no failure of electricity also all you need is a pressurized air uh, which which is available uh, it, it can be stored it can be compressed in reservoirs and stored as such so my dear friends this was about the pneumatic p controller in next sessions we'll be going in for pneumatic pi and finally in the last session we'll be going for pneumatic pid controllers as we did in case of uh, the uh, op amp based uh, electronic analog controllers these are uh, nozzle flapper based pneumatic uh, controllers proportional controller proportional integral controller and proportional integral and derivative controller as such so once you have a good grasp of this p controller going in for pi controller or even then to pid controller uh, will be a cakewalk as such my dear friends in case you have any queries or doubts or you want to share something with me you can always contact me through zoom sessions or lms what we call it as learning management system or whatsapp sessions or you can call me or you can have face-to-face -face interactions as the case may be uh, i uh, thank you for being with me i wish you a very safe stay and enjoy learning bye bye